What's up, guys, and welcome back to the Stocks with Mike and Tom show. We have an awesome episode for everyone today. We're going to be going over what happened in the market today and the best place to watch out for for tomorrow. The market won an, an absolute rocket ship to end the day. The SPY in QQQ literally just exploded up at the end of the day. So we're going to be talking about that and some potential plays for tomorrow. Make sure to stick around to the end. And if you guys are new here, don't forget to subscribe. We post brand new videos every single day. But Tom, what happened in the market today? Yeah, like you said, the QQQ and the SPY really exploded, but AMC also exploded today. And people, I'm sure, are really interested to hear about what AMC is doing. And it's up there right around that $60 resistance that we've been talking about in the past few videos. And, you know, it's hit off of this level quite a few times. It hit off of it again today and failed to break out above it. And I think that that's going to pose a very good level to watch for tomorrow. If AMC can start to really pop above $60, I think it could start to run, you know, almost as much as it did today, up another 15% possibly. And there's another good resistance up here around $68 to $70. So that would be a pretty big run in itself. But overall, AMC had a fantastic day today. Yeah, for sure. So that $60 resistance looks a little bit tough. Guys, let me know what you think AMC is going to do over the next couple months. I have people saying in the comments down below, AMC is going to crash down to, you know, $10. And then some people are saying it's going to go to $100,000 per share. So let me know what you guys think about AMC in the comments down below. I'm very curious to, you know, hear your thoughts. But looking at AMC, I think it's a great sign how it is holding its ground. You know, back in January, like AMC and GameStop and a lot of other, you know, you could say hype stocks, they exploded up and then they kind of came right back down. But, you know, AMC is kind of like holding its ground and that's a great sign. Um, like you mentioned, Tom, it was up around 15% today. And I think that $60 resistance level is huge. If we can break above that, I think it looks pretty solid. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that, that's that been the, the definitely the best level to watch for the past few days. And if we can just get a solid break above there, it's definitely going to be a great day tomorrow for AMC. But watch out. There is a support down here around 40 as well. And it has kind of stayed between here. So I wouldn't be surprised if it failed to break out or if it just kind of consolidated between here. But hopefully we can see a solid breakout because it'll definitely shoot up tomorrow if it, if it does end up breaking $60. But Man, I mean, there, there is these other stocks going up as well, like CLOV still. Um, they ended up, well, they were up earlier in the day, but they ended up tanking off a little bit. Let's see how Wendy's was doing as well. Up just a little bit, up 0.99%. So really AMC was just a big one today. Uh, let's see how GameStop, GameStop was even red. So it seems like AMC was really the main like hype stock that was moving. And I, I think that's a good sign as maybe some of the investors are like, pulling out of GameStop and some of the others and going back into AMC. All right, Tom. So let's check out the SPY intraday. Like this was like a crazy, crazy close. It just exploded up. And I'm definitely not complaining about that, but like, was there any major news like in the market in general today? You know, there wasn't too much, but there was some interesting news that came out that CNBC reported where the CEO of JP Morgan, Jamie Dimon says that JP Morgan is hoarding cash because there's a very good chance that inflation is here to say here to stay. And they're pretty much saying that JP Morgan has been effectively stockpiling cash rather than using it to buy treasuries or other investments because of the possibility of higher inflation. And that, and then also that that higher inflation is going to force the Federal Reserve to boost interest rates. So that's a big thing that JP Morgan's doing. And it's pretty interesting because people would think that, you know, you would transition from, uh, you know, cash and maybe buy up like gold or just some equity or, or who knows, you know, any type of anything besides cash, which is obviously going to get hurt by inflation. But maybe the, those higher interest rates are going to cause uh, JP Morgan to have to pay more or something like that. But it's always good that they have cash on hand. And, and he's quoted as saying today that we have a lot of cash capability and we're going to be very patient because we think that there's a very good chance inflation will be more than transitory. So just, just keep that in mind you know, going forward over the next couple of weeks. But it doesn't sound like that, that type of news would have necessarily like helped the market explode the way it did. But I'm really happy to see the SPY and the QQQ start to break out like this because we've all been kind of sitting here waiting for the SPY to have a solid move to the upside. And 
we're finally seeing it. But whenever we go look at these bank stocks, I mean, they've honestly been getting destroyed the past few days. So overall, I mean, it, it, maybe JP Morgan's just trying to boost their stock up here. I don't know. But overall, I mean, it didn't seem like that that news would affect the market too much. But there is also that FOMC meeting coming up later in the week where Powell is kind of just expected to, to kind of keep the current uh, monetary policy and just kind of still uh, still continue buying up bonds and, and keeping their asset purchasing program. So I think that it, overall, that's just good news for the market. And maybe it's just a run up, you know, kind of like, like a, a pre run up into that meeting. Alrighty, well, let's get right into our Discord member of the day and then the momentum plays. Today's member of the day is DJ Monkey. Huge shout out to DJ. Thank you so much for being a great member of the community. And thank you for always asking great questions and just being a great member, great positive member of the community overall. Tom and I really, really appreciate it. So thank you for that. But now let's get right into the momentum plays for tomorrow and with the first one we have apple so apple has been in this slow and choppy range for the past couple months now but it had an amazing day today yeah it kept exploding up part of the reason why the qqq and the spy are flying up so much but go ahead and make apple break above 130 60 tomorrow all right and then with the next one we have woof w-o-o-f yeah woof petco health and wellness Go ahead and make them break up above 2940. And this was actually a huge move today. All right. And then with the last one, we have Square. Square, another one that's killing it. Make them break up above 23150. All righty. So we are watching these three plays for potential day trades to the upside tomorrow, only if they can break above the levels Tom listed. But now let's get right into the $5.5 million options trade for this Friday. We are looking at the Roku 375 strike calls. They expire this Friday, June 18th. I think Roku's chart looks pretty good. It is a tech stock and tech is really leading the way today. Um, I just know like from watching the market intraday, you know, the SPY, it had an amazing close, but at some points during the day, the SPY was down and the QQQ was rocketing. And, you know, the reason I bring this up is because Roku is a tech stock and there's just a lot of positive momentum in the tech sector right now. So I would say that the smart money is longing these calls. They are a weekly, they are weekly call options and they are like $10 out of the money, which worries me a little bit, but Roku is known to move a good amount. So uh, I'm definitely watching Roku. Yeah, me too. I would definitely have to think that they're long it also. I mean, there's just a lot of momentum into these tech stocks today, especially with that awesome close on those indices like the NASDAQ and the, and the uh, S&P 500. It's just looking really good for tomorrow as well. And honestly, Roku's coming right up to this 100 SMA. And a lot of these stocks lately have been just popping right above that and just breaking their resistances. And I, I would definitely look for Roku to continue that up tomorrow. It might not have another 5% day, but I could see it definitely having another green day tomorrow. All righty. Well, let's get right into our questions from the previous episode. And with the first question, we have Hunter saying, Palantir has my peepers on it this week. <laughs> so looking at Palantir, it had a pretty good day today. And Tom, I know we were talking about it privately today and it looks pretty good. You know, like uh, it's been consolidating for the past couple months now. And I think it's great to see one, the market kind of rocketing back up, but more specifically tech stocks starting to pop back up. So I'm with you, Hunter. I think it looks pretty good in general. Tom, do you have any like technicals or anything for us? Yeah, I mean, it's honestly right on that like 25, 20 resistance, which is like right where uh, right where it's been kind of like hovering around over the past few days on the highs. And it's just kind of holding its ground at the end of day today. It's also above all the SMAs on an intraday chart. And whenever we go look at it on the daily, it's just hovering right around that 100 again, like I'm seeing a lot of stocks doing lately. And lately, they've also been kind of breaking up through that. So it really looks like with Palantir holding its ground and with tech popping up that Palantir has a really good shot, I think, to start to break out of like that 25, 20 resistance and start to really go back up this week. And I think that we could possibly target somewhere pretty safe up here around like $27 if it does end up breaking out above like 25, 20. Sounds good. With the next comment, we have Shelby saying biggest undervalued stock. So um, I am definitely biased towards Zoom. So I'm going to say Zoom, which is ZM. I also like DraftKings, NIO, Palantir, Enphase, and even like Peloton. Uh, those are some of my favorites right now. And then also Redfin. Tom, do you have any uh, specifically? 
Yeah, I mean, I really like DraftKings right now with how it's kind of dipping back down a little bit. I think that's going to be an amazing opportunity here for the next couple of weeks. I'm also looking at like AMD a lot as well. You know, they kind of recovered back up today at the end of the day and ended up posting pretty well. And once they start to break out of their 100 SMA and start to break out above their resistances, I think AMD is going to be another great stock and possibly follow like in, in like NVDA or NVIDIA's footsteps. I think that it's going to do pretty well over the next few months, especially like if tech can start to, you know, recover back up. You know, whenever we go look at these daily charts, like a lot of stocks like AMD, Apple, Microsoft, and others have kind of just stayed within a range for like the past few months to like the past year now. And I think that it's finally time for them to finally break back out. So if we start to see like upside with AMD and some of these chip stocks, I think that it's going to be a pretty good opportunity. And, you know, we've been seeing ones like MU kind of been, they've been like selling off a lot lately as well. And also Intel. So I think that there's just a lot of opportunities like in the uh, chip sector and Intel actually really recovered up today. And on the daily, looks like it might start to actually break out. So I will have my eyes on Intel as well. And that's pretty crazy because early on today, they were really selling off, but they recovered all the way back up. All righty. And then we have Piper saying, great video as usual. Uh, what do you guys see with the pot stocks this week? CGC, SNDL, and Tilray. So let's look at Tilray, Tom. I like them. Um, they kind of fell a decent amount today. Tilray was down almost 4%, which kind of sucks. But these uh, MJ stocks are so volatile where like, you know, like it's, they're definitely on my radar. And we all know like how they move. Like we could see back in like February, you know, Tilray went from, you can say like $20 all the way up to 67 in a couple weeks. So like, um, they are very volatile, but I'm really glad you brought this up, Piper, because I actually really like the setup. Yeah, the setup is fantastic, actually. And like whenever you're looking at ones like Tilray and others, keep in mind that some of them are safer than others. So like CGC is going to be a lot safer than like Tilray and ACB. CRON is also a lot safer than uh, than some, than like uh, Tilray or ACB as well. So some of them are safer than others. But what I honestly recommend is just averaging in the shares. And just kind of holding them because you can see like how much potential stocks like Tilray have. Like if it goes from 20 to 60 a share, you're going to make about like 300% there. So it's honestly like a pretty good setup, even for shares. And I think that that's the best way to go because even if they go down, you can just continue to hold them for the longer run. Yeah. And you know, like you, what'd you say? Like 20 to 60 Tom on Tilray? Yeah. And that's not even like near the top at all. That's just up to where they ran like last uh, January or February. Yeah. And like, it depends like how the options are priced because I've seen some people like have like well over a thousand percent gains on, you know, moves like that, but you know, they're volatile. They have a lot of potential, but at the same time, they're also relatively risky. So I don't know. They're definitely on my radar though. And then we have Muscle saying, uh, hodling AMC in possible uh, add to NIO. NIO is on its way as a true growth growth play, in my opinion. Thanks, guys. See you on your live Monday morning. So let's check out NIO, Tom. So looking at NIO, it, it was up a little bit today. And, you know, it was up around 2%, which is good. Let's keep in mind that it was up around 7% or like 6% on Friday. So like, you know, it's hard to have those back to back, you know, seven to eight or whatever percent huge green days. But um, I'm definitely with you, uh, Muscle. I really like NIO and their technicals look pretty decent and they're uh, starting to bounce back up pretty well. Yeah, they are. It's starting to look really good. They just started to break out of that resistance of around $45 and they really moved up. I really like that. They are up around 50% from support and that just shows you how much like some of these stocks are starting to really fly up. And I really like NIO. I see a pretty solid uh, resistance up here around $50. And I think that that's very attainable this week, especially like with the way we saw tech close. And let's go check out NIO like in after hours to see how it's moving. And it didn't really have the best close in the world, but overall it's been up a lot the past few days. And I think that it definitely has potential to continue, you know, later on this week. So definitely keep your eye on it. I think that this is a, a pretty like undervalued play, especially like for the longer run, you know, um, I think it was a great pickup anywhere under like $35 for shares. I know lots of people were selling puts on it as well, which is a fantastic strategy. 
For sure. So guys, if you want to trade with Tom and I every single day, basically daily options trades, you can click the first link in the description down below. Daily options, day trades, swing trades, uh, unusual options activity, day trading from our bots, you name it. Uh, you could also sign up for about $40 off the first link in the description down below. One of the best plays like over the past couple months or past, yeah, past couple months was Zoom. We picked up the 290 strike calls uh, for August 20th, around $3,100 each. And right now they're around $7,900 each. Of course, not every play is like that, but uh, we've been pretty hot lately. So consider joining. If you don't like it, you can cancel at any time. And also there is that coupon. It's the first link in the description down below. But Tom, do you have any last minute stocks, options, or anything you're watching for tomorrow? Yeah, I mean, I'm still keeping my eye on the SPY and the QQQ. That end of day run up was really nice that we saw out of those two. Um, I really like those indices and I've been like just waiting for this move through this upper resistance around 425. And I'm just very glad to see that today with the SPY. And also the QQQ was just straight up on fire as well. So just watching both of those for tomorrow, I think all these tech stocks like Apple, Microsoft, um, Tesla, even, you know, they all have pretty good days today. And I think that they could definitely continue into, into tomorrow. So keep your eye out for a lot of these stocks and even like Facebook here, you know, there's just lots of potential out of some of these like uh, grow growth or uh, growth stocks slash tech stocks, you know, that that's like really the hot sector. And if you have, if it's like a combination of both, it just seems like that they're just flying right now. So I really like it all to be honest. And NIO even is a good one to watch. Well, sounds good. And thank you guys so much for watching today's uh, video. Remember, if you want daily options signals sent to you every day, you can click the first link in the description down below for about $40 off. And then also come join Tom and I live every single morning at Market Open on the new Stocked Up Live channel. The link for that is in the description down below. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel. We post brand new videos every single day. But other than that, thanks for watching.